This is video number three. A uh, quick, uh, quick caution here. During these, uh, during this performance or this, uh, this tutorial, I am not. I am not. This is not a sound audition. This is not a sound review. This, the uh, sounds are coming through the speakers being recorded by the microphone, which means they sound horrible. You cannot record a keyboard speakers through the microphone of the camera and know what it's going to and know what the keyboard is going to sound like. This is a huge caution to everybody. People just don't realize that the microphone will never give you what the keyboard sounds like. So in the first and second videos I had the outputs of this keyboard plugged into a high-end recorder and that is telling you what this keyboard would sound like through good stereo speakers or or head good stereo headphones and also when you play the video the back on YouTube whatever you're playing that video one or two through if you plug this Korg into the same uh, speakers that you're using to listen to the video it will sound exactly the same so if you're running your YouTube videos through a nice stereo system which I hope you're doing or you're listening to it on really good headphones when you buy the Korg and use those same headphones and plug this keyboard in to those headphones you're using now it will sound exactly the same or so close that no one I don't think anybody could ever tell the difference so a big caution in in the uh, review of this keyboard this video does not even come close to what this keyboard sounds like it, it's gonna sound like crap absolute crap being recorded through these speakers and into the uh, microphone of this camera now the speakers they're doing the best they can for the little tiny things that they are inside this plastic case but they just can't reproduce the full sound that this instrument can make through high quality speakers or high quality headphones so again a big caution this tutorial number three is really not so much a the, the sound has nothing to do with anything in this video well, all we're doing is all I'm doing is teaching you how to use the keyboard in this case thank you hello and welcome to review and tutorial number three of the Korg Micro Ranger in number one video I showed you how to use this keyboard in a performance to its maximum uh, efficiency or maximum potential. In video number two, I showed you some of the front panel controls and tried to get you to understand how it has to be in certain modes to function. And in this third video we're doing today, we are going to go over some of these buttons again and but this time I'll be zooming back and forth on the display so you can see what's happening so as you can see right now we are set up in the program mode and as we discussed in the in the uh, number two video it is the simplest mode we are simply selecting instruments as you can see it's reading grand piano right now and if I come over to here and I select, oh, let's select a guitar. I select my category, and now you can see the list. It still says grand piano, and it's still playing grand piano. But I have a list of eight selections. So if I, I have to select something to bring it off that grand piano, now you can see it's changed to club J guitar. <laughs> or I switch over to nylon we are now actually switching through the eight choices and as I continue to switch guitars we can see the number of pages which are listed right here page number four which can be done with these page numbers or by clicking the guitar 
and we went over this before so that's as far as I'm going to go with this okay here we are zoomed in on display we're still in program mode over here and you can see it's displaying the grand piano and that's what we're getting and at this time we can either select change the pages right here on the right you can see the pages one two three four there's four pages in here and we can select anything we want go back to our categories strings and voices choose something else and that's about all there is to selecting instruments except as I said when when you go to this menu button and you're in program mode you now enter in to a menu which allows you to do many things as far as editing the instrument you have basic edits you have amp envelopes which and LFOs this is synthesizer type adjustments so even though this is called a micro arranger in program mode let's go through some of these pages we have a huge amount of control over the instruments so this is a full-blown synthesizer filters filter modulations low frequency oscillator one two envelope generator for the filter amplitude amplitude modifications uh, amp uh, low frequency oscillator one and two amp envelope generator low frequency oscillator one two effects and you can even edit the effects too I'm going to press exit to get out of here back to our simple little display and selecting instruments so even though program uh, mode seems very simple on the on the outside it is going to be the probably the most complex part of these tutorials as far as adjusting instruments because it's going to deal with being a sound designer or a synth programmer now whether I actually do videos on that I haven't decided yet um, we're, we're going to use this as an arranger first so we're going to go into editing and creating uh, arrangements from scratch before we go into actually synthesis and editing instruments so that's about it for program we're going to use program on its very simple basis and that is while in program mode you simply select one instrument and you play it across the entire keyboard now let's go to style play and that's where everything really begins here I switched on the mode from program over to style play don't confuse program with the program buttons and performance buttons on the far right this is the mode up in the in the left side of the keyboard next to the volume sliders so in style play we get the style name across the top and in this case it's leaving off where I left off and this 11.6 actually indicates a saved performance that I did myself and saved to a performance slot so this is actually a saved performance so I'm going to go over to the far left here and select something else now I'm in the factory preset and it's playing this half beat so what the what I, the display is indicating is which chord did I play last? And it says D minor. The tempo. And the tempo, as long as the value to the, to the right and left of these uh, up-down arrows. I'm going to be using the up-down arrows, the, the exit, no, enter, all this stuff under the value wheel. I'm going to be using that today. It's off screen, but uh, I'll tell you what I'm using at the time. So I'm using the up-down arrows to actually change the tempo time.
and you can do that while it's running until you find the, the temple that you want. And then next to that, it's uh, it's telling me the the transpose or octave, and that is another very powerful feature of this. While this, uh, while the instruments are selected, you can actually change the octaves for each individual instrument on the fly very fast. It's very well done here. Um, in this display, we cannot do it. Now, to step down here, you'll see, uh, you see the half beat. That's the name of the style. The STS-1, that is the single touch setting. That's these four buttons at the bottom. So watch what happens. There's one, two, three, four. And each one of these single touch settings can change everything that is load it into the machine. So under one we got electric piano. Under two they've got another electric piano. Sax in three and electric car in four. Each one of these are set up and you go, well I can't see what's going on. Well we're on the top level display of style change. So I'm going over to the right and I'm going to select exit. As soon as I press exit, now we're actually seeing a screen of what's loaded. Watch what happens to these to these uh, four instruments as I go through the ST4s. Three, two, one. As you can see, each one of these are configured completely different for S, the single touch settings one through four. So on the left side of the display, we have drums and percussion bass and the accompaniment. Now the accompaniment can be up to five voices that we can't see in this display. I'll show you that in a minute. And on the right we have all the voices that we can play live. Now what the Korg is labeling these as, we have the voices that make up the style. That's the drum, bass, and the five, up to five instruments. Those are called track instruments. These ones on the right are called real-time instruments. That's how Korg is calling them in the manual. Real-time instruments is what you what you actually play on the on the uh, keyboard. And right now, the real-time instruments are telling me these indicators along the side. You can see the little keyboard indicator. What it's telling you me is that the Studio Electric Piano and this Electric Piano 2 Velocity Switched are live. It's also telling me this fourth one down is the left hand or split instrument and that is turned on so so I got strings in my right in my left hand that's only played to the left of the split and in the right hand we have two layered instruments and what they've done is they're velocity sensitive so if I play lightly you're only hearing this top one but this other one has been specially adjusted when I play hard. You can hear that ringing coming out. And all of these can be turned on and off as you please by pressing both these left-right buttons on the side of each one. So if I want to turn off this velocity switched one, now you're hearing only only this top one. These top three are can be layered all together. So we can turn all three of those on and play them all together or two or one. So right now even though the indicator is up here that's only indicating which one we want to work on. The little icon with the piano keys is actually telling you which one's turned on and live. And the same thing with over here. It's not the same piano key indicator, but it is the same thing. We can press both buttons at the same time and actually turn on or turn off the drum track. And you can do that while it plays. So if you like the style and you don't, and you don't like the drums in there, you can simply turn them off. You can, also, you can turn off the accompaniment and just play to the bass. So 
right now it's the display is telling you the acoustic piano is is active the strings in the split left and it's only active in the split mode in, in the uh, split keyboard mode and that's on the far right that we went over in tutorial 2 I advise you not to skip tutorials because each one's built on top of the other one and it's displaying all of it's telling me the entire percussion bass and accompaniment is turned on now this is not telling you the whole story so let's go to a different display let's come over here to this track select button and press that once now we're getting the whole story of this style this display is telling me everything that's in the style it's telling me which kit and of course each kit is kind of different it could be a jazz kit could be a electronic kit we can and there's a percussion kit the bass the name of the bass being used an acoustic and then the rest of these one two three four five are the five tracks or five track instruments that can be used in the style now whether they are used or not we're not sure we can turn it on and try and listen but it's hard to tell with everything going at the same time what's actually used and that's where the shift key comes into use we can use the shift key to actually solo an instrument. Now if you're not familiar with mixer terminology that means by holding down a shift key and leaving it down coming over here and pressing both buttons here I am actually what's called soloing. The only thing you hear is what's selected now. As you can see all the other icons went out and that happens with the shift key. So we know there's a we know there's a standard kit playing of course And as you can hear, there's a tiny little bit of percussion playing, just a little tambourine. So let's go to the next one. There's the finger bass, it's playing. Holding down the shift key. Piano, they use that piano, but did they use this other piano over here? You can see that wasn't used. And neither was that one. And neither was that one. Now, we're only listening to this uh, it's it's running and we're only listening to it under this variation number one and as and as we did as discussed in video two we have all these variations we have fills and we have intros and endings these may have been used there so if I switch over to variation four all of a sudden, hey, there it is. So finding out which instruments are used can be a little uh, confusing because of all the different variations, fills, endings, and beginnings, intros. So you have to go through these pretty carefully. So let's unmute this, go back to our full track. So that was variation four. I'm going to go back to variation one. As you can hear, that's a little simpler. So, it's now displaying everything. So now we can actually do some quick editing on our style. And a lot of, and for me, most of the time, the style just isn't perfect for what I wanted to play. Maybe the volume of the drums are too loud compared to the bass. Maybe the bass volume isn't loud enough. Well, we can adjust all that, and we can also change which instrument is in there. So we can all do it. We can do it all live too. Let's say that uh, I don't like the drums volume, so I'm going to select a drum, and then I'm going to press the left arrow and hold it down, and as you can see, the volume changes. Now I want more bass, so I select my bass, hold down the right key to turn it up. And 127 is our maximum. So I've just adjusted this uh, uh, this uh, this beat very quickly. Now let's also say that uh, I think this acoustic piano was probably making, but I can't remember what it was. So let's go back to our shift key, solo the acoustic piano. And yes, that's the main instrument 
in the uh, pitched inf instrument uh, accompaniment. Let's say, hey, I don't even like to, I don't even want a piano in there. So now I'm going to go over to my selectors of instruments on the, on the right side here. And at this point, this is the most important thing to do is you have to remember when you're selecting instruments that it has to be on the program mode, not the performance mode. If you switch to performance mode and you select something, you're going to lose everything that you've uh, changed. So when selecting instruments within this uh, editing of the style, be very careful when you're putting an instrument in there that you're on program mode. So let's take it off of this piano and we're going to put an organ in there. So I press the organ category, now I have to come in and pick out an organ. I'm going to pick this one. And I don't like that, I'm going to pick this one. And I don't like that, I'm going to try this one. Okay, I say, okay, I like that. Now I need to get out of this, um, I need to, I need to get out of this, uh, this program where I'm selecting instruments and that's done with the exit key again underneath the data dial the up down exit enter yes no I'm gonna exit this so I go back to where I was and now you can see the puff organ has been placed in there in in place of the piano so let's now we're still you can see the icons are all missing on the side that means we're still in solo mode so let's hold down the shift key and take us out of solo mode now everything's playing and, I, and this puff organ is now too loud, so I'm going to select it and turn it down. And now we've just adjusted volume, changed instruments in a style. Now, at this point it's very important to write it because this is a custom style. Now we can write this to performance and have the factory style unaffected or we can actually overwrite the factory style. And that's what I like about Korg the most is there's no presets. You can overwrite everything. That means because presets for people that like to custom design their own styles and instruments, presets always get in the way. So let's write this half beat. So I'm coming down here, it's a hard key to find, it took me a while, but way down here below the, we got the sequencer, below that is these delete, insert, single start, uh, write, card in use, and ensemble. Right underneath here is the write, and it says card in, write, card in use. So we're going to use this write, card in use, because we're using the, press that once, and now the display is telling me write to. So I have to find a place to write to. The performance name is on top. You can you can change that name by pressing the key, rotating the data dial to change it. But I'm going to leave it as stereo grand and I'm going to select a new place because 11.6 has already been taken. I'm going to use my plus my up down keys underneath the data dial and go, oh, okay, 11-7 is empty. The 11-7 is the location of your performance and that's how you would go back to find it. You would go back to find it by switching to performance mode on the far right over your over your instrument selector and then using and then when you switch to performance of course you're not selecting instruments anymore you're selecting performances. So let's do that as a save to there. So I'm going to right I've selected that I've changed I've changed the location to 11.7 and now I'm going to press enter yes and then it's asking me to sure is this where I want to do it I say yes so now this style should uh, be ch saved to the performance so let's check that out so I'm going to the far right selecting performance and I'm going to select this one here I'm going to exit to see if, what I got, and there it is, 11.7, half beat, puff organ.
So this is our saved style with a volume change in the bass and the drums and uh, the puff organ replacing the piano. Now, that was saved to a performance. If I go back to Let's see, I have to find it now. Okay, it's right here. If I select half beat. Now I want to I went to my factory settings on the left here and chose the style. Got this display, chose the half beat that we worked on before. Now let's press the ex exit button to see what we got in there. And you can see, well, the acoustic piano is back. And as you listen to it, the drums are just as loud as they were. That's because we did not overwrite the style of the factory set style. We did not overwrite that because we, we wrote it as a performance. So let's go back to our performance. Performance setting, I'm selecting my performance and I'm selecting this last one. This is the last one I, I saved. And as you see, they got the puff organ half beat and it's saved as 11.7 on our program change. And this has the, that used to have a piano in it, now it has that puff organ and the volume level that we use for the puff organ. That has been saved in a performance. And we have preserved, so let's go back over here again to the left and go select our regular half beat that came that's in the style on the left. We'll select that. And as you see, acoustic piano, long or drums. So it's all in the right menu as far as whether you're going to overwrite the, the uh, factory preset or you're going to make your own. So let's go back to the right button. Here we are on a factory preset. We have these choices of current style. By selecting current style and writing, it will write a new performance, but it will also overwrite the factory style. So if you really hate the factory style and you don't even want to use it, then go ahead and edit it and overwrite the factory style. There's a uh, there's a SD card backup. You can back all this up to SD cards, something we'll discuss much later, but you can back up everything and then you can return this arranger back to its factory presets with a reset. Almost all keyboards have resets where it'll just load back in everything that, uh, everything that came from the factory. So it'll be factory exactly like it was when it was new. And we can also individually individually save just the 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 STS the single touch settings. And it's all in this right menu. I'm exiting out of that. So I hope you can see the difference between on the left side we have. So let's uh, let's zoom out and I'll go through that where you where you can see me button pushing them. Okay, you can't see the display as well, but at least you can see me pushing buttons now. So we're going to do the same thing, not the whole thing, but just the selection. So our normal selection of styles that we don't make ourselves is done over here. So I'm pressing the first one, and now I'm going to scroll through the pages to find out which one I want. And there's that half beat that we used. So selecting the half beat. I'm pressing the exit button so I can change the display from the selection of styles to what's actually in the style. And while this track select button is lit, you can see the LED next to it, you will see the entire list of what's in the style, but you can't see what's in the real-time instruments. So I'm going to turn that off, and now you see the abbreviated look of the style in the left, drums, bass, and the five accompaniment pitched instruments. And on the right, the real-time instruments that 
that we actually play on the keyboard. You can see what's turned on. You can see the, all the accompaniments turned on. And of course, like I said, you can turn those off anytime you want. And by holding down the shift key, you can solo them. So here's the half beat. Now we're going to use the exit button to change the display again. I mean we're going to use the track button to go back to what was in there and you can see the acoustic piano. That's what we had changed and saved in our performance. So over here on the left side where we select factory presets it was unchanged because we saved it only as a performance. We did not save it as a style. If I had gone to the right button and scrolled down to here and saved it and written it by, by hitting enter and saying do I want to write that and I go no I don't want to change my current style that current style is the factory preset so we chose we chose to use 11-7 uh, slot to save a performance that we can recall over here. So that way the style is unchanged in the factory, but we also have an, another style like it that we adjusted ourselves. So let's call that one up. So it depends on what mode you're in over here to, to recall. While in program mode, of course, we're selecting instruments. But while in performance mode, we're selecting the performances. And I save that under 1, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the top. And these are all, the, the factory's already been in here and, as you can see, has already put something, has already made performances all the way through here. So we got 10 performances, 8 Two, uh, 10 performances, one through, you can see the numbers underneath here, 1 through 10, and then 8 in each one of these of these banks. So it's usually, I usually refer to these as banks and registration, so if I press 1 with the LED on top, it's 1, with the bottom, on the bottom it's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we have 20 banks, and then within each bank we have 8 slots we can save it in. And like I said, all the way through this first top bank, Korg has already put performances in there. You can overwrite those if you wish. But I'm in I'm in the first bank on the lower level, which is eleven. Just put a one next to the rest of these numbers to get here and then just a twenty. And we saved it here. And of course when you select it there's nothing on the display that tells you anything until you press the exit button. Now we're on 11.7 half beat. And as you see, there's the puff organ. That's what we changed. So now we have a we have another style, just like the one over here, except instead of a piano, we got a puff beat, and we have a louder bass and a softer kit, not softer drum kit. And that's how you can easily change a style to fit the kind of music you want to play. So let's uh, let's just do one more change here while we're on the outside, and you can see the button pushing. Let's say I don't like I don't like the sound of that kit. So let's select that, come over to here, and this is what I was trying to tell you to be very cautious. On this right side, we got the style change performance program. I have to be on program at this point because if I push any of these buttons here, it's actually going to change a uh, a, a performance save. So I press program, and now I can select a different kit. So over here we have drums and percussion.
let's try uh, Electro Kid. Power Kid. How many pages we got in here? We can do it. There's uh, page three, page four, five, six, seven. We got seven pages. The last page has only got one selection. We have this thing called Dragon Gone. <laughs> Cassinets. So as you can hear, we're, we have been changing the uh, the drum kit. So if I press exit to get out of this um, and now the, uh, the drum name is Cassinets. Now as you can see we're still on 11.7 so if I wanted to save this new drum kit it's different than what was there before when we saved it so if I don't save it now it'll revert back to what it was. So you'd have to go through the right button and again selecting performance stereo grand um, 11.7 it's not the name isn't important you can rename it but 11.7 is important because that's the actual location here and then I would press uh, enter to write that and this time I'm going to say no because I want you to see what happens if you don't write it So we have cassinets in there. That's what we wanted for rhythm. Let's go ahead and turn that up a little bit too, so we can hear it. Okay. Now let's say we forget to save that. And we come back the next day and we go to our performance and we select and uh, say we were on something else. Now I'm going to select the performance that we saved last. Uh, exit to see what we got. And you can see the standard kit has gone come back. Because we didn't save the additional changes we made after the original save. So the order you save and the selection you make in the while in the right mode becomes very, very important on this machine. But like I said, there's still a there's still a safe way, there's still a safe way out, and that is to once you've gone through the work of building up a couple of styles or editing instruments, you're going to want anything that you've done that's not a factory, anything you've changed, you're going to want to back up to the SD card. So anything that you're editing, you want to back up. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to go back and do it all over again if you lose it. Okay, so to recap for today, I'm going to switch over to program mode, switching out of style mode, which gives us just this display here where we can actually come over to our instruments and just select what instrument we want. What instrument do we want to play across the entire keyboard? Just what, you know, an instrument we're playing only one instrument across the entire keyboard. And as I said, when you go through menu mode, though, that's when you go deep into the program mode where you can actually change how the instrument sounds. This is synthesizer editing, something we won't be getting into for a while. So I'm going to switch back over to style play. And under style play, this is the top level menu. We would come over here, we would select what uh, category we want. Let's say we wanted to go to World, World 1, and uh, I'm going to select Pop Polka. Play a chord. Under here, we're on SD1. Select my next one. SD3. Each 
one's got a diff different instrument built up. So here we are in tight so they can see uh, the keyboard even better so or see the display even better so here we are on a, on the polka let's go over here I'm choosing on the left in the style chart choosing world and party polka and I'll press the exit key to see what we got and you can see down the left are the uh, real-time instruments that's what's being played on the keyboard and on the left is the abbreviated view of the of the uh, style instruments and by pressing the track select button on the on the left of the bottom left of the display as I showed you earlier now you're seeing all eight sounds that are included in this style on select track select and we go back to this side under track select you can't see the real-time instruments that you actually play on the keyboard so why on track select you're only looking at the style instruments so with track select unlit down the left we get to see our real-time instruments and we're also seeing this number one of the single touch settings so I want to I want you to see what happens when I switch from one to two all of these things changed to three all four changed again all four changed again and that's what you get to do when you save the single touch setting for this performance when you save this as a performance these single touch settings no matter what instruments you put in here right now the trumpet two trumpets are being played together but if you wanted the grand piano would be included you can turn that on and they're all playing but you probably don't want a grand piano so at this point we could change that come over here program mode I want to change that to um, uh, let's see not a trumpet but uh, let's add a trombone in there exit now the piano has gone and let's uh, turn the volume up on that. So now all three instruments are playing. And, at the, and the strings at the bottom, of course, is the, is the uh, split point. And they're not turned on. And they only work when there is a split point. I just turned it on. So now the split point, when in split keyboard mode uh, will be strings and to the left of the split point is all three instruments playing at the same time now during the performance you can turn those on and off as you please and that's just STS-1 now if I move out of that and come back you can see all the changes I made are are been erased. I'm back to the grand piano and I'm back to the same settings. You got strings at the bottom and they're not turned on. So anytime you make a setting in STS1, you have to save it. And then you go to two. And any changes you want to make there, you save it. Any changes you make there, you save it. And then four. When you go to the right button and you press right and you select that, it's going to be STS STS number four and you, uh, if that's not what you want of course you can use up down up down keys to change that exit back to where we were so you have to remember to save as you go and that's a close-up display of the uh, STS single touch settings and here I am back in uh, program mode was playing just the grand piano and and it goes across the entire keyboard so that's the display settings for
customizing your styles and saving them and giving you the choice of either overriding a factory style or creating your own style that can be saved and recalled from performance. So we have the left side where you're picking up styles. We have the right button where you can choose to whether overwrite these or to write to a new performance over here and save the factory preset. And that's the, probably the biggest confusing part of the saving custom styles on this keyboard is where do I to save it and where does it end up when I do save it. So I hope this video has made that clear and uh, I'll see you in the next one.